Hello, I'm Bill Skiff, and I'd like to spend some time with you now and with my colleagues talking a little bit about early basketball in Vermont. And for us, early basketball in Vermont meant the 1940s. We'd like to show you some pictures of some of the buildings we played in. And to use the word gymnasium would probably be a little bit of stretch of the imagination for the buildings we played in. The buildings we played in usually had a multi-purpose. They were churches, they were Masonic halls, they were study halls, and some, some were even designed originally as swimming pools. We're going to talk to you about these buildings in terms of their home court advantage. Now, anybody familiar with basketball today knows what home court advantage means. It generally means 10 points in your favor if you're playing at home. But in the old days, in Cambridge, in Jericho, and in Essex Center, and in the leagues around here, home court advantage meant a lot more than that. And so we're going to be talking with you about that and some of the other things we can remember. Because when we go on a court today and we see the young people practicing with more basketballs than we saw in our entire career as high school players, we think back of the good old days when we really had home court advantage. So the first um, speaker today will be uh, the gentleman on my right, and I will introduce them to you. Here we have Jack Whitcomb, who played his sports around Essex and Essex Center. Sitting next to him is Jerry Brown. Ken. Kenny Brown. Kenny, Kenny Brown. I'm sorry, I mentioned Jerry because Kenny and Jerry used to be the guys that tore up the Jericho League. And sitting on my left is my living, oldest living friend and former uh, teammate at Cambridge High School, Dick Dufresne. And as we look at a picture of the building in Essex Center, uh, Jack, why don't you uh, fill us in on what you can remember of your home court advantages? Our home court advantage was that we played in the town hall in Essex Center. You want me to talk down? <laughs> we played in the old town hall in Essex Center. And it was, the town hall was heated by wood. And there was a stove in one corner. And we had a stove pipe that went right across the court. And so you had to be careful not to hit the stove pipe or to, or to um, go high enough above the stove pipe. And if you're lucky, you can make a basket by shooting right over the stove pipe. And that was quite an advantage over the other teams because you could practice doing that. Jack, did it ever, did it get knocked over? Once it did, I remember, <laughs> it, we had to stop the game and put the stovepipe back together. Then you had to be careful of the stove in the corner, too, and not get too close to it. <laughs> because, and uh, the rooms where you changed, they weren't heated. <laughs> didn't have, you didn't have showers back then. You didn't take too long changing, either. <laughs> <laughs> you changed in a hurry. <laughs> it seemed to me, I remember, under the baskets were, of course, on the wall, right? The backboard. It was on the wall. And um, one was on the right and one was on the left as you entered the building. And Jack, what year did you, you graduated 19... I graduated in 1945. Yeah. And they stopped using the school, I guess it was uh, 1950. 1950 is when uh, Essex Center High School closed and then they went to Essex Junction. How many was in your graduating class, Jack? There was three in my class. <laughs> I was third in my class. <laughs> So you must have really studied hard. <laughs> I studied hard, right? But what? we had a reunion just in August. It was the 125th reunion of the Essex class for Institute. Wow. And my class, every one of them was there. All three. <laughs> Very good. 100% attendance. 100% attendance. Well, the next uh, building was not a, a basketball building, but, you know, there were games played all over the state of Vermont, <laughs> and this was a building in which we played a different type of game. This was a uh, building that was known as either the chicken coop or the hen house. And it was where on Saturday nights Al Cole <coughs> played, um, a band played there, and it was great dancing. My mother wouldn't let me go because she said it was a den of iniquity. <laughs> <laughs> that it was. Uh, you guys remember going there? Oh, dancing yeah. Well, yeah. Oh, yeah. It's changed quite a lot. You see, it's an apartment building now, but uh, it used to be a ramp going in and. Uh, uh, what was the, the guy's name owned it? Bill, Bill Atkins. Bill Atkins, Bill Atkins and his wife. Yep. Uh, uh, he worked for Goss uh, Tire, I right. think, at the time. And this was kind of his... Great friends with Wes Brill. Yes, yeah. he was. 
Duke, you used to have trouble going up those stairs. Yeah, I did. I used to get knocked down them every day. You and Jack could tell you used to get knocked down once in a while. Boy, I got knocked down there good one night. Well, there was another interesting place that we um, we played, as I say, a little different type of a game. So we go on to the next um, building that we played in, and the building that you're going to see now is Cambridge High School. That's where Dick and I uh, played our basketball. And Dick, uh, maybe you can tell us about some of the home court advantages you remember there. Well, we had a major home court advantage because uh, we used to have to play basketball in the study hall. Huh. And to practice, we had to move all the chairs out. And we had about 100 students in that area. We had to move them all out into the hallways and everything else and the sides so you wouldn't damage the chalkboards and everything. were all chicken wire. <laughs> and you learn to shoot with no trajectory at all. You shot a flat shot, something like Tommy Hudson of the Celtics used to do, only he was much better. I remember playing there, you had to use a lot of backspin, a lot of backspin. There was, a, as I recall, there was a beam that went across <laughs> that, you had, that you had to stay under. So every shot, unless you're right tight to the basket, you would have a lot of English on it. Well, there wasn't any kid that ever played basketball there that didn't get a million scratches from that chicken wire, too. You know? Oh, yeah. Was, somebody was always banging you into the chicken wire, and after a while, some of it would break, and the little pieces would... <laughs> and I'm, I'm amazed we didn't have to have major surgery just from playing up there. And the, because it was a study hall, because of the floors were waxed all the time, every basketball right. we ever played yep. with was black and not brown. All, that's right. They oiled them all up to keep yeah. the dust down. And that's it would right. become a little bit slipperier. Yeah. yeah. As Bill was talking earlier about having seen so many basketball, basketballs, his father was our high school coach, and his entire sports budget for the year was $75, and that included baseball, gloves, bats, oh, right. everything. That was his entire sports yeah, yeah. budget, 75 Can you imagine that in today's market? Yeah. yeah, like Dick was saying, the color of the balls, the balls were always black. I never knew that basketballs had McGregor 10 XL on. We never saw any right there. Well, his basketballs got a lot of use, didn't they? Oh, they the sure two of them least. that we had. Yes, we <laughs> did. The next one uh, here is uh, Johnson. And uh, this was uh, considered, I think, by us as one of the nicer gyms in the, the yeah. Cadillac yeah, of gyms. Without a yeah. question. This was the best yeah. best hall we played in back in those those yeah. years. Had the posts. Remember, see the posts uh, uh, were down the, down the area. There's a the center circle. <clears throat> and. Uh, I remember one time going for a shot down to one end, and someone gave me a push, and I went down and put my foot up on the uh, door to keep from uh, stopping myself, and the door opened up, and I went right out on the porch <laughs> into uh, ankle-deep snow. <laughs> and that's also, uh, if you remember, we used to have quite a few dances up oh, there, too. Oh, I was going to bring that up, Kenny. Yeah. Great dances that's there, too. That's where the Johnson, yeah. uh, the college was, and yeah. uh, a lot of activity yeah. there. New Year's uh, Eve, they had a dance there. H.I. Yeah. Dunbar. H.I. Dunbar. Yeah. Dunbar. Yeah. Them or uh, Weeds Orchestra. Weeds. Weeds. Sterling Weeds. Weeds. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, the Imperials, I think they call yeah. themselves. Yeah, it was the Imperials. Man, yeah. your memory is good, Kenny. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> The other thing I remember about that uh, gym was I think it was the only one in the league that had a shower. And we yeah. used to take our winter shower there. Well, I believe that's true. <laughs> yeah, I think you're right. I think my mother would verify that. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, yeah, and here's, a, here's an interesting uh, building. This was the building up in Hyde Park. And uh, again, uh, as Jack said in the beginning with his building, we played the width way of this building, not the length of it. So you could put your um, foot on the on the side of the wall and shoot from one to the other. And this, uh, you remember that little door, dude? That little door was the escape door. That was the only way out, other than your main entrance. If there was a fire or anything else, and if there was, you had that to jump first down step the was, story. First step was a bummer. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. I remember Dad telling the boys, "We have to leave that door, boys." Remember, the first step is a long one. <laughs> Again, the baskets were against the wall, and uh, this is the inside. There's a picture of the basket. Yeah. There's a basket, and this was this now being used by the town of Hyde Park as a town garage. As oh, you can see, I they see. got all kinds of stuff in there, the village of Jericho. And as I remember this, there should be a shot in here somewhere. And some of these gyms, the center circle and the foul circles used to intersect. Right there. Yeah. Yeah, yeah there it is right, right there. there. Yeah. Isn't that this, uh, this is the way they used to, they intersected. So you can see it was on short. Was, was this the gym, Bill, where they had a, a grate in the middle of the floor? 
No, that was Jericho. That was Jericho. Jericho. Yeah, that I was remember where it left was. Left-hand corner. Okay, yeah. yeah. You hit that with the basketball and you lost all the control. <laughs> or if you took sure. a spill on it, boy, yeah. oh, I tell yes. you. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And I, the other thing I remember about this, Jim, was uh, there's, there the people used to sit up in the balcony and smoke. People yeah. used to smoke in the building. Yeah, yeah. I remember your father was furious about yeah. that. Yeah, the smoke yeah. would hang down over the over the court, <laughs> and if you got uh, ten guys and two referees under the backboard, you couldn't see what was going on. So we used to get a lot of elbows. <laughs> well, the court was so compact that the referees and the players were constantly running into each other too. You know, so you yeah. had a chance to get even with the referee. <laughs> <laughs> but I wonder how some of the kids would enjoy today playing in a. You know, oh, I, I think they have a hard time figuring that out. I think they would have a hard oh, time yeah. figuring it out. But yeah. there was definite home court advantage to practicing in these gymnasiums all the time. Yeah. Oh, no yes. question about it. Now, Ken, here's part of your old stomping ground here. Yeah, it looks to me like Bakersfield Academy. Yeah, Brigham Academy. Brigham, Brigham Academy. Brigham Academy. Brigham Brigham Academy. Brigham. Uh, yeah, I think they're just reactivating it again. Uh, it was, I think it was empty for a long time. But we play, I played there in 1946 and 47. And uh, the problem with that, it was a nice, really nice court, but there was a balcony that went around, I think on one side, as I recall. And when you took the ball out, you had to usually throw, uh, put the ball down to somebody or straight out, because you couldn't go up because the balcony kind of hung out over. <laughs> and uh, yeah, we had some very good teams back in those days. Yeah. Dick, I remember we played there one time, and uh, we had a little, a little incident with uh, Frankie Reed and our uh, center, Charlie Brown. Frankie was one of the premier players of the time, both baseball and basketball, and he and Charlie, even though they were good friends, they got tussling for the ball, and Charlie got the leverage and, and uh, threw Frankie over his back, and Mrs. Reed, Frankie's mother, was a teacher for us at Cambridge High School, and she got so furious, she came out and hit Charlie over the head with an umbrella <laughs> <laughs> right in the middle of the court. She was so mad because he'd thrown Frankie over his shoulder. Frankie laughed about it. He thought Charlie laughed about it because he thought it was funny, which it actually was hilarious, and of course the crowd got a little extra entertainment. Oh, yeah. 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 Uh, I remember, I don't know whether you guys do or not, but it seems to me that they sat in the balcony and then they would, they would jiggle the kids would jiggle the, the backboards they that, did. Were, that were up on the balcony. So you'd come down, you take a shot, you go for a shot, and the, and the rim of the basket moving. would be moving like yeah. that. That was a part of the home court advantage. That was part of the home court advantage. So All of my to... family, with the exception of my sister and myself, graduated from Brigham Academy also. We were the last two, and we graduated from Cambridge. But all of my other brothers and sisters graduated from Brigham. But you, you went from uh, Bakersfield over to Bakersfield Jericho? Bakersfield to Jericho High School. Yeah, I graduated from Jericho. Uh, my junior year and senior year was spent at Jericho. Yeah. The, um, the, the building, as you look at it, we played crossways of it. Oh, this is the Jericho gym yeah, right here. Yeah, this is your stomping ground. Yeah, now yeah. I remember when we, when we practiced during the wintertime, uh, uh, Dustin White or Lauren Bishop, their, uh, our principals, one in uh, my junior year, one in my senior year, we sent a couple of guys over to get a fire started because uh, <laughs> there was just one big, large, uh, you see the little white shed there? Yeah. On the back side, that's how you get down to the basement and you get the fire started. Maybe an hour before, he sent us over to get the building heated up a little bit. And the same thing during the games. Now, when we played, uh, we used to change clothes in the high school, which you don't see here, but it's just to the right on the same side, and uh, that's where we had to change. We didn't have showers or anything, but uh, and even at halftime, we'd all run out, maybe 20 below zero, and run over to run. the high school. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, those were some of the some of the advantages of. Back, I remember going there, and that was one of your advantages. The gym was always cold. It was always cold. Yeah, <laughs> you got warmed up quickly though. Uh, in the one corner. <laughs> Uh, uh, just above the furnace was a huge grate. It was probably about five foot square, which was on the <coughs> playing surface. Oh. And you had to be very careful when you're over in that corner, because if you took a spill, that's those those uh, grates would would cut your knees or your legs wherever you had to hit. Yeah. And they were oh. yeah they were hot. As a matter of fact, so, I was talking with Al Stevens the other day. He used to play for Essex, oh, yeah. and he said, uh, I think it was Al Pratt. They used to always try to knock him down into those grates right. when he played there. Uh, skin <laughs> had a nice knees. hardwood floor, though. Remember yeah, that hardwood yes. floor? Had a nice yeah, floor. Oh, nice beautiful floor. floor. Yeah. 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 That's Actually, one of the nicest 
We consider yeah. Jericho a pretty good gym. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yes. What we had. Right. Yeah. The uh, Along the sides, uh, people were sitting in digital, uh, <clears throat> these folding chairs. It was very, very close to the sideline, though. Used to wind and up. they had to keep their feet in or they could trip up the players. And that did happen once in a while. I noticed that you always used to pick a certain girl and you'd wind up in her lap. <laughs> <laughs> Strictly an accident there. Yeah, Strictly. absolutely. That's one of the few gyms that's still uh, being used as a recreation area. I was that's, there. It's, yeah, community. Center. Community, Community Center. Center. Yeah, yep. yep. I was in there, and they were they were using that to um, to uh, work with some of the kids and right. some physical education activities. Yeah. <clears throat> now we had quite a discussion about this before. Um, I thought we'd played in this Richmond gym, but uh, now that I, I think about it, I'm not too sure. Unless it was my senior year, maybe in fifth. I have been your senior year. Um, that I talked about earlier that uh, some of the buildings were uh, churches and Masonic halls. Well, this of course is a church. And the basketball court was on the top uh, part of it, and now they have uh, boarded up the ceiling, and uh, it's now part of the town office program. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> but the church reminds me uh, when Dick and I were playing one year, we went to a tournament in Waterbury, and we wanted some extra help. So Father Marcou, he was the local yeah. priest in yeah. town, and mm -hmm. we went. We all decided we'd go to a, a midnight mass with him, get a little extra help, and so we went to the mass. And when we got done, we asked him for a little extra help, and he said a few words over us. But I'll never forget the last thing he said. He looked at us, and he said, Boys, I want you to remember that tomorrow night when you step on the court, the Lord will not be in uniform. <laughs> 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 he made it pretty clear that uh, we're gonna have to, if we were going to win, we had to do it ourselves. Oh, yeah. Okay. And uh, that was kind of interesting. He was a there. priest in Underhill, wasn't he? He or was a priest, he? Was yeah. St. Thomas. St. Yeah, Thomas, sure. Yeah. Yeah, and yeah, great he, had, he had Cambridge also because there was, you know, oh, yeah. priests yeah. that days had three or four parishes. That's right, sure. So that was yeah. just I want to point it. one thing out too. Uh, back in those days, uh, the schools were all classified A, B, and C, and uh, usually you pay, played within your division. Now C was the smallest school. I think it was uh, less than twenty-five boys, boys in the school, and in Jericho, I think we had only like thirty in the whole school. And uh, especially for baseball, we used to have to sometimes use seventh and eighth graders. Now you take a guy like Elwood Pratt, who was an excellent baseball player, and he he started playing varsity ball in the seventh grade because you didn't have enough boys who went out for it. Yeah. Uh, I think B was from <clears throat> 25 to 50, and then over 50 boys was uh, A schools. Hmm. But all of the teams in our leagues were C. Yes. yes, in your league. Yeah, yeah, in the leagues we were yeah, in, in right. the schools, they were all that small. That's right. When it yeah. came to the state tournaments, I think they 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 let everybody play anybody. Then they look for the best team. Yeah. No, remember, not in basketball. Not in basketball. No, in not baseball. Basketball. In baseball. In baseball. Baseball. Yeah. baseball. There were no classes yeah. in baseball yeah. because we played That's right. BFA of St. Albans That's and right. we played Richford and we, you know, we wound up playing Burlington yeah. for the Northern Vermont Championship and they were an A school. Yeah. Right. Uh, they probably had 2,000 students and we had yeah. 96. Right. Yeah. But in a way, the <laughs> smaller school may have had a, a little bit of advantage in that they had some of their players that played more years because they had played like in the seventh and eighth grade. Uh, yeah. And I remember in Brigham Academy when the Reed boys were playing, Dave and, and Frankie, Frankie, they played Winooski in the finals right. that year. I think it was in uh, 47 yeah. or 46, I think. And Dave pitched. Dave you know, Pitch and Frankie you know, Cott. I think, I think the game was two to one or three to I one. Think, I think they it. lost. Uh, it was a very close game. Excellent yeah. game. Excellent game. Yeah. They, they were the best pitching combo in the state at that right. time. Even yeah. though they were brothers, they were. Yeah, had Don McEwen that was yeah. that was oh, playing oh, first base. Who uh, play for UVM. Don? Yeah, he pitched yeah. for for Big and McCabe, Then yeah. he went on to pitch for UVM. Yeah, and then the old Cardinals. Didn't he play with the Cardinals? Bromo he did. He played with the Burlington Cardinals also. And Dave Reed pitched for the St. Johnsbury team. I can't yeah. remember what they were yeah. at that time. But you mentioned the seventh and eighth grade players. I remember our team when we went down to play Burlington. Nine of us had full uniforms. The tenth guy had the pants. The eleventh guy, <laughs> eleventh guy had the shirt. <laughs> and we were happy to have 11 guys. Yeah. yeah. Everybody, everybody had, had a glove, play. though. Everybody yeah, had a glove. Everybody, everybody had a glove. I remember had Johnny Bow pitched that game against us. It was a good game. We could beat 3-1. to one. Yeah. You know, there's, um, there's one card that we'd like to kind of end up with here to show you a little bit uh, that we, we were talking about the old days, but we can still talk a little bit about the future. There's a, a little card that shows the... Um, future of Cambridge, Vermont. And here you see 
Um, we have a subway going to Fletcher. Uh, here's a, the train going on to Fairfax. And <laughs> here's a, a beginning of the Pleasant Valley uh, stove sightseeing tours. And uh, up here we see the original spacecraft I think, <laughs> hovering over Cambridge. Heading for the moon. Heading for the moon. And there's a, a balloon. little balloon that just went around the world. And this is a elevated ra railway elevated <laughs> railway going up the Pleasant Valley. <laughs> so somebody, uh, there's, a, there's a Mount Mansfield makes... dirigible, I think. So you can see that um, uh, as we look at Cambridge in the future, someone had a pretty vivid imagination when they looked downtown Cambridge, Vermont. Uh, going into you town. You found that uh, card in a flea market or something? Yes, I found yeah. it in a, in a flea market. Yeah. I think I, 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 that was uh, most interesting. Yes, I think that. Well, gentlemen, we thank you for being here today and to doing a little reminiscing. We hope that you out there enjoyed our little chat together. And I know that some of you who will see this played basketball in some of these old courts like we did. And we'd like you to send in your comments, drop in the line to the studio. And uh, maybe we can all get together sometime. Thanks a lot, and thanks a lot for coming, uh, Jack. Thank you. Thanks, thanks for inviting us. It was a pleasure to be here. See you later. Remember, home court advantage can be an advantage. <laughs> right. Right. All right.